Welcome back to Nifty 50 Photographers and uh, if you watched last week's video this is the follow-on part two and this is going to show you how to process the photos you took into a panorama and how to build up that stitched image. Now I've got my photos loaded into Lightroom so I'll show you what I do in there. So I've got all my files open on uh, in Lightroom. First thing I'm going to do is just one little thing. I'm going to sharpen all the photos and I'm going to apply any lens corrections. So I picked my uh, first photo. In fact, I took a, a series of eight. So go to the first one and I'm going to scroll down and go to sharpening and I'm going to set my uh, sharpening to 90. I'm going to uh, ignore the radius. I'm going to set the detail to about 50 and the masking uh, about the same so I'm going to set masking to 50 as well and I'm going to set the noise reduction to 10 then I'm going to click on the uh, lens correction section I'm going to click on both remove chromatic aberrations and uh, apply a profile correction now that's the only processing I'm going to do at this stage I'm now going to select all my eight photos so I uh, click on the eighth one pressing my shift key and now press sync and the only things I'm going to let me just uh, unclear all these so the ones I'm going to apply in this sync is the, the treatment and profile I'm going to ignore all these others about exposure and white balance and so on and I'm going to click the detail one because I want the sharpening and the lens corrections and then finally the calibration because I want them all to have the same calibration and once I've done that I can press synchronize so now I've got my photos all with the, the lens corrections applied I can now go to the photo menu and go to photo merge and choose panorama and what Lightroom does now is it'll generate a preview by stitching all those eight photos together. And there we have uh, what looks like our panorama. Now it does give you uh, a few things that you need to be aware of. So it gives you a choice of projections. Actually, they don't make a, a great deal of difference. Cylindrical is the one it's defaulted to, uh, and that is actually the, uh, the right one for this. But if you click on the other two, you'll see if I click onto perspective, uh, you get a slight change and a click on spherical you'll also get a slight change but I think cylindrical is the, the right one for the for this if you click on uh, fill edges so when it crops uh, when it builds these um, uh, stitches these all together um, because of the variation in heights you get some spaces and it crops those out what you can ask it to do is fill those edges so it'll fill the white space spaces with something that is similar content to uh, what is missing uh, and it will make your panorama slightly bigger um, so it'll give you a bit more in the in the top and bottom I'm going to click on that instead of auto crop the alternative is to uh, unclick on that and have an auto crop and now we just simply press merge and uh, it'll take it a a few seconds just to uh, crunch that up and uh, it'll come up with our panorama and there we have it here is our panorama and it's filled the edges in nicely um, it looks like a pretty good uh, uh, good photo and so what I'm going to do now is a little bit of processing on it now what you'll find is Lightroom has already done some adjustments to exposure and things that it thinks are right I'm going to change those slightly to get uh, my look my feel for it I'm going to uh, drop the highlights a little bit I'm going to change my whites and blacks so I press the option key and I play with the white slider till I get, get a tiniest little bit of white appearing on the screen and then do the same with my blacks and I'll accept about five percent of that so that's my whites and blacks covered and now I'll just go back and tweak the exposure and contrast I'm going to give it a bit more contrast and I might apply a slight bit of uh, dehaze to it just to make the sky this will make the sky look a little bit bluer and not too much just just a very subtle amount and 
That's looking pretty good. I think I might boost my shadows a bit more because they look a bit dull in the foreground. And vibrance is at 11. Looks a little bit too too vibrant for me. I'm going to change my uh, contrast to a medium contrast. That's just a personal taste. And I'm going to leave pretty much everything else as it is because I apply a very slight vignette at the bottom there. Just a tiny bit of a vignette there. And that I'm reasonably happy with. Just out of interest, if you click on the crop, you can then, you know, you might decide it's gone too wide. You can change that if you think you need to. And I'm just going to pull it in a bit on this uh, left hand side. One thing I don't like is this telegraph pole. So I might just crop that out uh, to there. And then I'm happy with it. And now I can click done. And that's my panorama created. So it really is that simple when you get into Lightroom. You could play around with those adjustments some more, but I'm reasonably happy with that. Now, if you haven't watched it already, you need to watch my video on how I took those shots uh, to get the eight shots you needed to build that panorama. And that's what I'd recommend you do next. I look forward to seeing you in another video.